Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Man, I love the smell of new talon grips in the morning. Hello, just an opinion here with you on the workbench. And what we've got here is another new set or another new, uh, <laughs> another new instance of talon rubberized grip. I'm going to be installing these grips on a car PM9. Uh, first thing is when you uh, when you take your talon grips out of the envelope, they come in and they just come in a you know regular envelope. Uh, you're going to get a good set of instructions that comes with it. If you have also looked at uh, the previous videos, you know that I use the word smush a lot, and I undoubtedly will use that word again today. Um, and the great folks at Talon, having heard my plea for smush to be incorporated into the instructions, and you may be able to see here, they have written the word smush on my instruction sheet. So <laughs> kudos to the great folks at Talon. Um, now, step number one is to field strip your pistol. And I mean, you don't need to break the slide down other than take it off. But the first thing you want to do is you want to take the slide off of your pistol. The second thing you do is you open the packet of um, pre-moistened or alcohol wipe. So we'll give that a second to dry and blow on it a little bit like hot soup. Somebody gave me a piece of advice in a comment on another of my installs. And I thought, you know what, that's actually not a bad idea. There's really no way to leave this application, this, this backing on, unless you cut it. And I hadn't really thought of that. And somebody suggested, well, why don't you cut the backing so that you aren't exposing all of the adhesive at one time. And I thought that was quite an astute suggestion. So I'm going to try that. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of giving it, I'm just laying it on initially. Now one thing about the Talon grip is that it does allow you to lift it up and reposition it. question I had in my mind is, before I take this backing off, I want to discuss it. I want to get your advice. It's too bad you can't offer me that advice in real time. Is we see that as we bring this around, there's going to be a very small amount of overlap. Should I try to tuck in the overage, or should I trim the material so that it is a seam with no piece being lapped over the other. So I think that what I'm going to do is when I get to that point I'm going to probably trim this. I'm going to try to have a really super clean butt joint right here and not have any kind of an overlap. Now one quick thing, real quick, you see this, you see this little panel See, there's a tiny, tiny little Allen screw right here. And there's a little, little cutout for a removable panel. Now, that is some type of maintenance panel that car uses. I do not know specifically what it would be used for. If you ever need to access what lies beneath that panel. If you ever need to remove this panel, you are going to need to either A, remove this grip and buy a new one because once you remove this grip, you're not going to get it back on. Or two, you may find that you need to take a, like a razor 
you know, an X-Acto knife or a razor or something, and cut that where those seams are. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors, and I am going to try to trim Trimming things is always one of those, you know, you know, going back. And there, if you can see, if that is showing up okay. Yeah, that looks... Got just a tiny bit of gap. And I don't mind that. In fact, as I work this around, that gap may still close a little bit yet. You don't really, you can't really stretch this material. Okay, we got this good and warm with the hair dryer, and we're continuing to smush. And now that it's nice and warm and pliable, you just want to press. And I'm pressing with a good, decent amount of pressure. I'm not trying to break anything, of course, but I'm just, you know, pressing down with a nice, nice, firm pressure, using my thumbs mostly. And my fingers, of course, on the other side. But I'm just pressing. I want to press this rubber down into the natural grip. You see on the back strap here, there's some checkering. And you should be able to see that checking, checkering will actually start to come through a little bit. Okay. That was the second time with heat with the hair dryer. And we're looking really good. I was noticing while I was turning it around and applying the heat that this little seam that we have where the two ends of the material come together, there is a gap, but it's very, very, very narrow. And what I'm kind of pleased with with it is that it's very straight. I mean, it almost looks like a... Let me see if I can get a good angle here where you can see it. Yeah, there, you see it right there? That, uh, that line. I mean, it almost looks like a factory seam. It's, I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay. Now it looks like a yeah, it looks like a complete pistol. Let's zoom out a little bit, give you a better look. There we go. Um, this is car PM9 with uh, talon grip, rubberized. I like it. Um, can't wait to try it out. I've actually put talons now on. This is my fifth pistol that I've put talons on. So um, obviously I'm, I'm a big fan of the talon grips. I think they're fantastic. I will put their information, their website information and such uh, below uh, at the bottom of this. But um, in the meantime, check them out. So if you're if you're interested, they're inexpensive. They're a great company. They have fantastic customer service. They ship super fast. Um, maybe actually, they mail them to you, U.S. Postal Mail, um, and they they come very quickly. So I definitely uh, I definitely recommend them um, not only as a good product but as a great company to do business with. So uh, that's it. Car PM9, Talon rubber grip. We're out of here.